Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really fun snow globe easel card. Look at that. Oh, I love this. This is just so cool. Oh, I just absolutely love this and it, it helps with the paper pack. Um, before I go into that, I just want to also show you what I tend to do with most of my cards that I hand, you know, give to somebody. I have lots of vintage old um, stamps. So I have, for example, here, these are some Christmas ones. I have a few packs of Christmas. There are tons in here, all been used, all been franked, and they just give a really nice touch to your card. So I've got Easter themed, I've got Thanksgiving, I've got some Halloween, um, I've got all, literally all kinds, landscapes, buildings, you name it, flowers, food, they all, all those kind of things all come on stamps and it just does give a nice touch. So this one here, I've done it so that it fits perfectly in a six by six envelope, which is this one here. So you can see it fits in there and I've tried it, it does, it fits fine. Um, but I just absolutely love this and you can see all the flakes. These are, um, I'll just show you here before I get everything else. So these are um, iridescent snowflakes. They're from the range. I brought them last year, totally forgot about them and then I pulled them out and I used them in my scrapbook layout, Snow Mountain. So that's, I thought, right, I'm keeping those out to remember to use them. So I've used them inside this globe and they just look really, really fun. And they do fall down as well. If I just tap it, they've kind of moved about a bit, but they fall down and if I just bring it up, it's just really fun. You can put obviously sequins in this, you don't need to have the, the flakes, but I just thought for a snow globe it looks brilliant and it is made just the same way that I made my circle easel card, but this time I've added this base to look like the globe stand. And yeah, I just really love this. And I have gone a bit bigger with this one as well. So you're gonna need, let me just keep that together there. So I said it, it helps with the paper pack. So I'm using the really, really good, I love this pack. This is the Jolly Holidays um, first edition, as always. It's just amazing, 48 sheets. And as soon as I saw this paper with all the rows of houses, I thought it reminded me of a snow globe. And then when you look through the pack, just give you a little flick through you have snow globes and that simple pointed base and that's how I came up with this idea so really love it so I'm just going to go through and select I think I'm probably going to use yeah I'm going to use that same piece there for the base um, just so I'm not kind of kind of hacking into too many other colors and everything else I've cut out so I'm going to keep that piece at hand okay so for the main card base you need a piece of, you either need a pre-made 6x6 card or make one from a piece of 12x6. So this is a piece of 12x6 and then I've just, sorry it was a piece of 12x12, 12 12. I've cut it in half so it's 6x12 and then along the 12 inch side I've just scored at 6 inches to give me a normal 6x6 6 card. What we're going to be doing for this one is I'm going to be using my cutting system. Now I absolutely love this. Now don't worry if you don't have this, but you will need a plate or some other circular object that will fit within this six by six area. Okay, so as long as it fits within the six by six area, then that's fine. Now, if you've got one of these, you want to set it to five. Now that will actually be five and three quarters because the blade underneath comes out further. So on here, you've got four inches, just there. Then you've got five, which is the middle marker. And then you want half of that again, so it's five and a half, okay? This is the X, X Cut Circle Cutter, and I've shared this. It's on my blog under the tool, tools I love, and I will also share it in this blog post. But I purchased it from the range, and I always rave about it. Now what you want to do is sit it in the middle of this, but slightly a smidge, more towards the folded side so I've got my open end facing me okay and then basically you can just kind of I'm lifting it up for the minute just so I can go around and make sure that that is going to cut all within that square so the card itself comes in at five and three quarters 
or is it five and a half? And that's maybe it's about five and a half to five and three quarters, um, and that allows room then for that base so it all fits within a six by six envelope. Now, what you want to make sure you do with this is when this piece goes up, you want it to go over the top of this because we, we want a little bit of this top piece here that it doesn't cut because we want it to stay attached. Just like I've done in my other circle easel card which I will link up here. If you want to just quickly watch that and you can see what I do there as well because I use dies in that one. So you may want to use dies but they were just slightly smaller. I think it ended up coming in at four and three quarters. So have a look at both maybe before you go into this just so you can really get your head around this bit. But it is it is it is easy once I show you. So I'm just going around just making sure that that is going to cut all within there which it is. Okay and then make sure you've got nothing obstructing it and then cut all the way around. Now it's cutting through two pieces. So you have to really push down on it like so. Now it's just torn a little bit there which is no biggie because that's actually going to be completely covered but just be careful it doesn't that's the first time it's done that actually but I am going to completely cover that so you won't see it. Now when I open this up you can see it's attached and you do kind of want that I'd say certainly no less than an inch this is coming in at one and three quarters so that's fine but I wouldn't go any any lower than that being um, any shorter than an inch okay so I've got that piece then I want a white piece which I'm going to cut the same size okay um, so I've got a piece of six by six white card here and again I'm just going to sit that on there just make sure that that isn't going to go over which it isn't push it down and then just drag that all the way around like so that is going to be what I'm going to create my scene on so this is my scene card and that will stick over the top but also I'm now for this one I'm going to do another piece of red in the same size because on the back of this one, and it is no biggie, I'm still going to give this card, but on the back, you can see obviously all the heat, um, all the embossed part. I would prefer that to just be plain red. Um, so I'm going to do another one here. Again, when I come to assembling all this, it's going to make a lot more sense to you as well. So as always, I say, watch my tutorials all the way through and then go and make it. And then you want to do another one. <laughs> in that same red. So this was, a, I just got a piece of 12 by 12 and cut it into four. So I got the four squares from it. Then I'm gonna do again, like I said, this is gonna be our frame. Like so. So you want that to sit perfectly over the white. But now we wanna create the frame. So on that same piece, with this, I then dropped it down half. So I then popped it at, um, five inches. Now if you want it slightly thicker then do so because it might make it a bit easy for you. It was a little bit fiddly I'd say at that that width so maybe let me just drop down. I'm actually going to drop down so now I'm on the four, so that was at five. I'm now on four and three quarters okay but it's entirely up to you but I'm going to do that one a little bit smaller. Now for this one you need to make sure you get it as centered as possible because you want to have an even border. Now the easiest way I've found to do that is by just holding my ruler and making sure I've got roughly the same measurements. This is one and one, two, that's one and a quarter, one and a quarter, one and a quarter, one and a quarter, yeah. So that's about centered now, okay? You'll see what I mean. So now I'm gonna go and cut this frame And if I wasn't as centred as I could get it, it would be, yeah. So it's ever so slightly thicker on this end than it is there. But it's literally, you can hardly see it. That's my frame. But what I would say is if you've got a side that's a bit thicker, so that's slightly thinner at the top there. If I put that down, it's a little bit thicker here. I'm going to have that on the bottom anyway, and I'm going to be covering it. You can see there just put in things and you can obviously have more bits and pieces here as well or maybe I have it at the top actually because I've got a lot more going on so yeah maybe I'll just turn it so it's at the top 
but either way it doesn't matter but that's what you want to create but you may find this much easier by using your nest of circle dies because all you will do is line your die up in the middle of this circle the next size down and then just run it through okay so just have a look like I said do look at that other tutorial because it may really help okay so you'll have a frame you'll have your white piece for your scene I've got the back piece to kind of just cover up anything and then I've got my main card base which is this piece here so that's what you want to have so next I'm going to emboss this piece here now the embossing folder I've got and I want to use is only a small one for I think it's an A5 um, sorry an A6 card but I liked it because it's got that snow um, kind of polka dot so what I've done because I knew I had a frame on this card and that all of the flakes were going to kind of sit to the bottom underneath those flakes is a kind of a, a, an empty space where the embossing folder didn't um, meet up so yeah it's just ways to kind of w use what you've got and still make it work for you obviously if you've got a 6x6 um, embossing folder with these on then brilliant so I'm going to push that through a little bit further and obviously I know my frame's going to cover a lot of this outer edge so I'm not worried that it doesn't go all the way up to the top there but that's that so I'm just going to run that through okay so there you go so see what I mean there it's not obviously embossed that bit and a little bit there but it doesn't matter because by the time this now goes on it's going to cover that top piece and it covers a lot of this but once I start building up things over here and obviously my little snowman and then the flakes you're never even going to know anyway okay so just ways again to kind of make it work for you so now we just want to start creating your scene so I have these pieces here so I've fussy cut the houses already I'm kind of going to still lay them out how I had the other one because I do really like that scene so I'm going to do something like that then I've got the cars, so I'm going to have the yellow car up here, the black car kind of there, and then this Christmas tree I'm going to have up there. Okay, now it's all overhanging, that's fine because we're going to flip it over and cut around it, but you want it to overhang because you want to make sure that you're going to get that nice filled kind of. Um, snow globe effect so I'm now gonna now that's all roughly where I want it I'm really just kind of tacking it in place you don't need to go crazy with the glue pop that one there if bits of the flakes kind of stick in between and underneath and that's fine because it will just again it's meant to look like snow and snow settles everywhere so okay so that's that all stuck down then like I said flip it over and just go along and just neatly follow your white piece of cardstock and just trim that off. And don't worry if it's a little bit, you know, you've, I don't know, it's just not very neat because you're going to hide this with the frame. But you do want to, you don't want to cut too much into that circle. There we go. Get rid of those pieces. And now we have our fun scene. I really really like it. Okay so next we want to make our little window with our acetate. So I've got a piece of acetate here it's roughly six by six and again you want to cut this at the original five and a half. So I'm going to pop that back again. So whatever you're using the larger die or the larger plate whatever size you made to make your original card base is where you need this to be set to cut your acetate so again I'm just sitting this on top making sure it's going to is that going to meet I thought I cut this I think I can just get away with this bit of, a bit of acetate let's give it a go there we go another wipe I think I've got away with it but you want to make sure it sits behind your frame which it does okay you can't even see that but there you go now if I've got a little bit overhanging there I can just trim that off but it's got to sit in fact what I'm going to do is just go around and take 
literally like one eighth of an inch. No, it's not even that. It's like a couple of millimeters just all the way around. It doesn't matter if this is crooked or a bit messy, but as long as all of the outer sides of the acetate stick, can stick basically on the inside of that frame. Okay, so I've just trimmed it down a little bit. Now you can see if I bring that up, you see it's all within this frame. Okay, so next on the side that we're going to stick, so we're sticking the acetate here, we need to put some tape all around this. Now I find it easier to use my red tape, so let me just grab one of mine here. This is the uh, one-eighth of an inch. I'm going to start sticking it and kind of twisting it. Just start sticking it and just work it around that circular shape. doesn't matter if you've got kind of a bit lumpy, a bit puckering, because once you peel off the backing, it will kind of all start to flatten out. It's more the backing that's kind of creating that lumpy effect. Okay, then remove the backing. And then very carefully with the acetate, start from one side because you know it's going to stick. doesn't matter if you've got any of the sticky tape still showing because that will just help it stick down in a minute when we stick it onto the seam. And then I'm just using my bone folder just to push out any air bubbles and just flatten down that tape. So now when I flip it over, there's our window. And you, you don't want any acetate hanging over that side there. So that will end up sitting over the front of your seam like so. I'm going to have my little snowman down here and obviously all those flakes will fall down there anyway. Now if you've got any marks on your acetate, which I have now, now's, a ch now's the time to just get some tissue and just buff it up and that will come up nice, which I'll do in a minute. So next we're going to stick our foam um, adhesive on the back. So I've shown this tip loads of times and you just get your double sided tape and you stick it onto um, grease proof paper or wax paper. Um, and then you can cut really, really thin strips um, from the normal, where's my one gone? Because I've already used it up, I think. But your normal roll of double-sided tape, foam tape, sorry, just stick it onto some greaseproof or wax paper and then you can cut thin strips and it also doesn't ruin your scissors rather than buying the expensive stuff. So I'm now just going to start, same way that I did with the red tape before. As I'm going around, I'm pulling the backing off here with my other hand and just making sure that you don't go over the edges. You've got to keep it within that frame, which is why I said earlier um, you may want a thicker frame. And this will be the reason why you might find it easier to have maybe a thicker frame again, because this bit can be a bit fiddly. It's one piece, and then I've just got the other bit here. Make sure you get them joined right up, because if you're not using the flakes like me and you're using, you might have little beads or sequins. They've got little bits in them. They will fall out. They make they find their way and they get out of any little gaps that you may have. So just make sure you get it right up close. Okay. So I've got no marks in the inside. I can wipe the top in a minute. So next what you want to do is add your flakes. So I have put mine back into a resealable bag because when they originally um, brought, when I originally brought them, they're in a um, bag that once you rip it open, you've got to use it all. And obviously, I wasn't going to. So what you want to do is you don't actually need a lot of this. I'm just going to grab a handful and just stick it into the middle there. That's all I need. Just a few little pinches. It's like um, gilding flakes, this stuff as well. It kind of gets everywhere, so try and keep it contained. Okay, so just keep it in the middle. Doesn't matter that it's a little like kind of mound of flakes. Just keep it like that. Take the backing off of your frame. Okay, and then very carefully, you want to sit this over. Put your head right over the top, so you've got a real good bird's eye view, which I'm going to do in a minute. But you don't want to see the top of my head. But I can see there. That that's perfect. And then stick it down. You want to mirror this up, marry it together so that it's literally perfectly sitting on top. Okay, like so. Now it's still all stuck in the middle, but if you just bang it, it will all loosen up. And now you can see some of it sits on top of the rooftops. It's completely covered my car actually, so maybe I've gone a bit too... Oh, there you go. If you just move it around, there you go, you can see my car. 
so maybe even one bunch but it doesn't matter it's a snow globe it's meant to have that kind of look about it and I, I really like it it's so cool okay so next before we stick down this other piece of red that I said about because obviously I don't want that on show that's going to go on the back so I just prefer it like that before you do that you need to have um, your actual base for your snow globe so this piece of cardstock here measures three no sorry three and a half by one and a half and then what you want to do is along the three and a half inch side put a little marker at half an inch and three inches I just bring it up you see I've got two little markers one there and one there from those markers from the bottom corner just cut up and then from that corner I'll cut down so you're just creating that shape and that's all it is simple as that now what I would say is when you go to stick this down so I'm going to grab some glue pop about you know a quarter of an inch thick grab your envelope sit that over it and then pop the frame right at the bottom of your envelope maybe leaving about one eighth of an inch okay making sure this is facing up the right way I'm going to bring in my slow snow globe and sit it on top that way you know you're going to fit it in your envelope and that's the easiest way for me to tell you to get it in the right place there we go how cool is that such a nice simple effect so now I'm going to add this piece onto the back here so this is that piece of red so I'm just going to pop my glue and again just sit that over following the outline of the white circle below and that way you know you're getting it all in the right place like so so right now you have a really nice topper you could add a hook on that and you could have it as a big gift tag on a bag I mean there's so many other uses for that as well so it's entirely up to you what you want to do but now we need to add it to this so this is now that, like that if you whatever you want to be your top so oh, that's got a bit grubby that can be my bottom because this mat I need to give it a good clean so this is going to be the easel piece you just want to fold that circle in half so it completely marries up with the sides don't line it up with the score line line it up so that these sides meet the sides below because you've got to remember we cut over so if I just bring that up you can see I've folded it so that these match up with this here don't match that top bit up with that score line it needs to go over the score line okay so you get those perfect nice sides then you have your easel okay next add your glue all onto this but just the front half okay then kind of fold it flat again grab this ignore the kind of stand bit that we just added just focus on this top piece and you want to again line up this circle with the circle below but making sure that it's nice and straight so kind of loosely sit it and as you bring that up you want that to all be even once you're really happy that it's perfect then just go over and make sure that's all stuck down okay so that's how it will be in the envelope and then you would just lift it up and it will once we put our wedge in it will stand like so so next you want to kind of decorate the bottom so what I've got here is a white piece and then I've got this piece here so this white piece yeah is that one so I just made it a little bit sh smaller than the original red size that was at five and a half so I've just gone down a bit smaller with that piece and then I need to do the other bit on top of that so if I sit that in there now can you see you just get that nice red frame and then if I grab the scrap here this big piece it's not quite a scrap it's only had one other circle cut from it but let me just cut another circle out so and then that one will sit inside just giving me that nice frame just layering it up just creates a nice kind of strong base as well for your card so if you're using maybe a, a card stock that's not so heavy in weight then layering up will be a good thing for you to do but as always make sure you use a 
um, paper friendly glue and nothing that's got a lot of water in it because it will just end up warping and it won't lie flat. And then that whole piece is going to sit inside. Like so. And again, to write your message like I did on the other easel card, you might want to cut another piece of white again, which I will end up doing, then cut that in half, removing a little bit, and stick it on each half of these, or just one half if you want, and write your message in there. Or you might want to have your message on this half here. Because once we put our stopper in, which is going to be about there, this area here is actually free, so you may want to do your message there as well. Okay, when you're decorating the front, whenever you're working on acetate it's best to use red tape to stick anything onto it so the red tape sticks really well so I've already put some on here and I'm basically just going to sit the same one around about there you can just see the car still and then I've got this one which I've put my backing already on exactly the same so I don't want to want to use all the bits um, because if I don't use, I probably won't use this on another project, so I'd rather do doubles and then I've obviously got all my cards sorted as well. Then I've got this bow, I love the green against the red, so that's going to go there and just kind of cover the end of that because it was off of a paper sheet like this. And that one had just come off the edge here and I thought, well I'm not going to waste it. You can see I've really tried to use all of the ones without cutting right into it because so these are all going to make great tags. Um, and the other side is only that, so it's not too, you know, you're not really losing out. So while I've just got my hot glue on, just to stick that down in a minute, the next is your stopper. So I've just created those two. I fussy cut that little snowman, and that's one of the tags from that sheet I just showed you. I've put foam adhesive. You must have foam adhesive for this bit because it needs to be raised in order to kind of wedge your easel piece in place so it stays there. So I'm just taking off my backing and it's entirely up to you really how high up you want to go but I know that I want this so it fits in like I think that's about right that will do there we go and it just sits against that and then my hot glue is just warm enough I'm just going to put a little bead of glue on there and then just sit that just so it's covering the edge there so there you have it guys, two really nice snow globe Christmas cards. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, hope I've inspired you and you're getting all your Christmas crafting underway now, I know I am. Um, yeah, as always, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I'll be back in a couple of days with another Christmas tutorial. Thanks for watching, bye.